Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Darcy Gray. I'm the Community Engagement Manager for Symphony Nova Scotia, and I have a very special guest here today, uh, Patricia Richard. Uh, from, I guess today you're from Sydney Matelot. Yes. And on other days you're from Lenny Gallant's band. Yes. And I'm sure many other things. I wear many hats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are you from? I am from Mont Carmel uh, in Prince Edward Island and I, I grew up in an Acadian community so my first language is French uh, but coming from PEI we, we do also speak English so we grew up bilingual I guess you could say and I've been playing music pretty much all my life. I think the Acadians from PEI are well known for, for playing music. It's a, a very um, families get together and have a lot of house parties I guess it's it's kind of cliche but it's actually true we did grow up getting together and playing music together and it was just a, a, a way to share our culture yeah awesome so uh, throughout the years I just kept playing music played in various bands and ended up uh, being in a musical show uh, based out of New Brunswick called Ode à l'Acadie mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. toured uh, internationally and we, we were together for about 10 years and, and played over a thousand shows, I guess. So I got a lot of experience there and, and playing with Lenny is, is just awesome as well. So in his show, Searching for Abigail and yep. yeah, and yep. we just thought we'd expand on that and have a Francophone part of the Lenny Gallant thing. And, and that's where Sirani Matlou That's awesome. And it's so great to have you guys here today. And I hope anybody watching this will have a chance to watch the video from the concert tonight. Too. Yeah, be great. So safe to say, and sorry if I'm assuming too much that you also play multiple instruments and grew up playing handing the instrument around the room and that's kind of my background Darcy. you're right i always said i'm like a jack of all trades master of none <laughs> that's how i like to say it Excellent. Um, but somewhere along the line about i hate to say when but at least 20 years ago uh, my aunt uh, showed me this instrument the boron and i i i, I kind of felt that i had to pick that up <laughs> It's pretty awesome. So what can you tell us about the boron? Where does it come from? How did it find its way to your aunt? Yeah, um, well, most people probably know that it is an, uh, an mostly known as an Irish drum. Mm -hmm. And many Irish players uh, play it rhythmically with traditional Irish music. Um, I guess for the purposes of my playing through the years uh, in more acoustic based bands, we didn't necessarily have a drummer. So I think I developed my style of playing to kind of replace a drummer. Yep. So it's, I, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm not like those incredibly talented Irish bo boron players. Uh, I kind of developed my own style and I, you know, I'll try to get the, the you know the kick and the the toms and the the snare kind of going which is why i use a, various different kinds of beaters to get yep. the, to get that sound and uh, yeah my aunt she just had somebody in i think western canada had given her a drum and i just thought it was amazing and uh, i just felt i had to to learn how to play it so throughout the years i ended up getting different different drums as well and this one's been made by um, alfred alfonso he's from uh, the states yep. and this is a i love this drum in particular because you can tune it on the fly i was gonna <laughs> ask you about that because it's especially the traditional instruments it can be a problem because the yeah. skin head gets really loose or really tight depending on the day and so yeah, yeah i noticed you uh, adjusting that before and yeah because and, you, and you've probably seen people um, you know, and with their hair dryers or their their squishy squishy bottles, they're trying to to get the perfect tone for the instrument. So this saves a lot of time and, yeah. and effort with this tuning system here, which is great. Excellent. And often in uh, theaters or, or places, the, the, if the air is really dry, you'll get a really tight sound. So it's great to have this on the, you know. Cool. You can just tune it on yeah. the go, even if you have to during a song. <laughs> if it's really bad. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, so I like my drum. Yeah, so can you describe in a hundred words or less <laughs> <laughs> um, ba the, the basic strokes, like how do you start to play the baron uh, if somebody's watching and they want to start? Okay, well, once again, I'll say my style yeah. because I don't claim to be a professional, but um, I play guitar. Yep. So I think... The fact that I used to sh that I'm used to strumming and guitar, yep. I just kind of adapted that strum to the skin. Yep. And you have to angle your brush or, or your beater, and I'm going to do it with the brush because that's what I play with probably 90% of the time. But you just angle your beater, and so I just as if I was strumming guitar, 
and and you just start that get a rhythm you know yeah and whether it's a three four or a, you know or a so you just get the get the swing of it yeah awesome. like that and uh once you get comfortable stroking like that then you can obviously start hitting the skin If you want actually I shouldn't be cheating there because I'm doing stuff with my backhand I won't do that yet I won't do that yet I'll just start now I'm, I'm hitting the skin a little bit with the with the ball yeah. that's on the so I'm doing the the brushes and the and, and the thump I guess you could say now the fun part where it gets really really fun <laughs> is in the back you can control the tone by yeah. pressing it against the skin cool. and you'll notice that there's a lot of different borons now some are going to be deeper and some are going to be thinner some are going to be bigger a lot of them do have uh, bars too mm -hmm. crossbars in the back and people will leverage against that or it might help it help you hold the instrument i've gotten used to playing without and i find it gives me more freedom to yeah. move my hand and back so i've gotten used to this uh, this type of drum so it works well for me but you can see as soon as you start pressing. Now, right now we're a little too floppy, as I would say. The tone is lost. So as you press, you see the different sound. So that's through. the tom-toms that you were talking about yeah. before going around the drum set. You're changing, you're doing that with your left hand. Right? Awesome. Yeah. So once you've you've got control over that like sometimes what I'll even do and it's really dry here so I apologize I'm not getting a, a big big rich tone but um, once you get used to that then you can play with even slapping sometimes I'll slap on the back of my skin and add a few things like that so and it's basically whatever makes you feel good whatever you hear and whatever you want to add I don't think there's any rules now real boron players might shoot me for saying that but uh that's basically you know basically my the base of of, of yeah. my style of how i do it yeah and oh you can also add some people add rim and you can add triplets if you want to So I'll just say in case the, in case it's hard to see on the camera, that's using the other end yeah. of the beater, yep. the top end, I guess. It's kind of hard to do slow too. Get, you need a certain amount the, of momentum or yeah. one of those sciencey sort of words. Yeah, one of those big <laughs> words there. Basically, you're you're flopping off the other end, and it makes it makes a triplet. You know. Awesome. <laughs> so. That's a, so that's basically a lot of, of the, the type of beater that I use. But another one that I really like is this, uh, just the fine little bamboo sticks too, mm -hmm. um, which adds another. Uh, which makes an interesting sound. Yeah. More, uh, I don't know how you mean more staccato or more percussive. Um, or you can go to one of these monsters, a big heavier thing, and it gives you more of a big rounder sound. Nice. Yeah. So this is maybe more of an advanced question, but I have to ask it because I want to know. <laughs> uh, when you're playing here, you're playing amplified, so that's going to change the way some things are you're doing i'm sure because you can make certain sounds that are going to be heard if you're at home playing in the kitchen and not amplified do you play differently or do you just deal with the different sort of result yeah you kind of adapt like yeah. right now i'm having a bit of a hard time acoustically because it's it's a bit dry in here so i'm having a hard time getting that big low end i love bass and low end yep. <laughs> so being amplified really helps that like there is no problem uh filling a room filling a theater with the sound of just this one instrument and when i get that feeling in the in the room it's it's quite can be quite in, intense so uh, i really enjoy it for that i mean you don't want to go overboard yep. uh, i'm not in a hard rock band or anything like that 
But uh, yeah, no, I, I find it easier actually playing amplified because I'm probably so used to it. Yep. Too. That makes and sense. Uh, the, especially the brushes, like if you add a lot of high end in your mix, you'll, you'll hear more of the. And, and you know, I kind of like to play with that too. Yep. So. Well, I'll confess that um, I'd never heard Baron played with the brush before, but okay. when you guys were here a year and a half ago or whenever that was pre-COVID and played with the full orchestra, I had you in my in-ear monitor from the other side of the stage. And I was like, what's that sound? Like, oh. I do not recognize the sound. And I'm looking up at you and I'm, but I also can't see what you're holding. Right, Because I'm right. seeing you from, from your left hand side. Yeah. So I started like sneaking up and looking through the orchestra. And, and at one point I didn't play for a tune. So I went out in the hall and it's like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. So that's, it's a super neat effect. And I, I've never seen that before. So yeah, yeah, they, you can find these online. I don't see them very often in the music stores actually, yeah. but I, I have been able to find some online. This one's as can you see, it's got, it's got some play in it there. The, <laughs> the hair is going, getting a little Lots rough looking. Lots of experience. But yeah, yeah. Um, so to finish up, do you want to play a little bit for us? Sure, I can just do a few different rhythms for you if you like. I gotta fix that tone. I'm not getting my big whoomp. <laughs> So that'd be like a four four kind of rhythm but if you want to go into more of a, a jig i guess if you're accompanying a jig or something like that uh... awesome yeah Thank you so much. This has been a really great, I wish we could sit here for a couple hours, but you've got a concert tonight and I know you've yeah. got to get some food and some water into you before then. It's, it's been a pleasure and I hope we can do this again sometime. I, I hope so too. Thank so, you so much for having merci us. Merci beaucoup. Merci à toi. Thanks everybody. I hope you enjoyed it.